Hi guys, Steve and Tom here from Sheffield Condition Education and today we're going to be talking about uh, internships, the benefits of it and what you can expect to take and how to even get an internship. So um, yeah, so me and, me and Tom were chatting the other day in the office just about our recent experiences at um, our internships at either different rugby clubs and stuff and it was just a really interesting insight and in seeing what Tom took away, what I took away and how we just sort of compared it. You know, so we thought we just want to share that with you guys today. So, uh, do you want to kick off, Tom? Just three benefits that you've got out of the internship, how you got it, um, what you learnt most, and why you think everybody out there should actually have an internship. Okay, so getting the internship, most guys either get their qualifications or they get some form of qualification to say they can strengthen condition and think, right, that's it, I've made it. And obviously, the journey is just beginning, all right? <laughs> yeah. So what you then need to do is get some experience. So if you're coming from a personal training background, you're used to training clients, but you've got no athletes on your CV. So what you then need to do is go out there and get in the industry and get some athlete experience. So internships is the answer to that. Yeah. Obviously, a downside could be if you can find an internship where you're getting paid, You've won the lottery. Yeah, you, you, you've, right. you've, you've definitely hit the big time there. Yeah. Definitely hit the big However, time. However, you've got to be more professional and see beyond that and think, right, what I'm getting, I'm getting an opportunity to strengthen condition athletes that are paid yeah. sportsmen yeah, and I'm yeah. getting experience. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how many years personal training experience you've got, when you're entering the world of S and C, you're starting at the bottom of the ladder. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I so you know, so you need to you need to suck it up and get stuck into your yeah. internship. I don't think uh, what was important for me is like when I had the opportunity to get the internship with um, with the Newcastle Falcons and stuff. It was it wasn't the thinking. Oh well, I'm not going to get paid. I'm going to lose out on travel or anything like that. It's like awesome. I've got I've got this opportunity. You know, I'm going to be surrounded by great SSC coaches, seeing the ins and outs and everything. It was just a, a challenge that thrived on. So sometimes baffles me a little bit when guys are saying, oh, well, I'm not going to be working for free. And it's like, well, you not, you might not be getting paid in money, but you're getting paid in knowledge. And I think that's far more long term, you know what I mean? And you're going to take so much from that. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, if anybody gets the opportunity and gets put off by thinking, well, actually, I'm not getting paid. They need to put that at the back of their mind because what you get is so much long term yeah. rather than just a bit of cash, you know. So, but yeah, that, I mean that's a great thing. And the way I got it is I saw the advert, and um, you do get these original doubts and stuff because I didn't have my typical uh, academic qualifications at the time. So I was like, oh, will they even look at me? So I, what I did is I contacted the uh, the person on the form sent him an email and said, right, me, um, can we just have a meet up? Can we have a chat and discuss it? And just try to get in front of them and just show my passion and my love for S&C and uh, let that come through because there's a big saying out there and we've, we've heard it and if you haven't, this is a great thing to work by. It's like, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And for yeah. me, that was really important to sort of get, get across to the lead S&C and the head of performance and just say, listen, I just want to learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is, I, I'm at the beginning of my journey. I understand that, I but it. I just want to learn, you know? And I think, um, luckily, the, the lead seen something. He was like, yeah, that's cool. I want to get you involved, you know? And, yeah. and, and that's a great thing, you know? So I think that's the first thing is, is getting that internship. Do, do whatever you can and just be make yourself available, make a few sacrifices because it'll benefit you in the long term, you know? Be proactive. So, yeah, you know? exactly. The more applications you put out, even if it's not a formal advertisement, do the groundwork, approach the clubs, approach the facilities, can I have an internship, can I do some voluntary hours, just get yourself yeah. on the ladder of strength and conditioning. For, for sure, and I think and once you sort of secure that internship, you then you really want to be looking about how you can make the most out of it. You know, what, what should it be going? You don't just want to go there and become that glorified water boy, which a lot of people think that's going to be it. You're going to be doing some of the, the jobs that are not so desirable, but the way I was looking on it is like, well, if the lads don't have the water, they don't have the, the shake set up, they don't have this, they don't have that, then that's performance enhancement. Yeah. So you're still, you're still a cog in the machine, even though you might look at it and go, well, this is a menial job, why am I doing this? Why am I filling up water bottles? But it's an integral part of it, you know? Yeah. And I think, understand the, the one percent that you're a part of, even if you're just thinking, well, I'm just running water for the team, but think of the bigger picture, you know? Yeah. And um, for me, 
get the jobs out, get them done as quick as you possibly can. So do the bottles, sterilize them, do the ice baths, get the shakes prepped, but then make yourself, get it all done, get yourself back to the gym, get yourself on pitch side. 100%. And just, Ask as many questions as you possible. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing You want to be the guy who, not too annoying where they chuck you out, but be that guy who's always asking questions where the s &E coach actually thinks about it and you get some good conversation going. Yeah. Rather than just hiding in the corner and just waiting for them to ask you to do something, get involved, look at the programs. Why do you do this? Why are we doing that? What would you do in this scenario? You know, and I found that was the the best way I could sort of accelerate my learning yeah. and make the most out of it because you are sacrificing time and maybe you lose a bit of money on it but like you say the what you get out of it you've got to make the most of that experience 100%. and the more you put in the more you get out so the more questions you ask and you know and I think um, that was the biggest learning for me is just ask as many questions as you possibly can I think the biggest learning curve for me I was lucky to do my internship and I mean that sincerely I did my internship at the Rotherham Titans uh, at the time, the head coach was a guy called Josh Fletcher, great coach, and I got a good coaching experience because I taught fitness qualifications for a long time, so practically, I was really good. So straight away, Josh knew I was good practically. However, I then found all the ins and outs of s yeah, yeah. that I never knew about. So yeah. the first thing happened the first day, I got a, a laptop thrust upon me with an Excel sheet. I'd never seen an Excel, like, why, why do I need to know about Excel? Before you know it, s and know a lot about Excel. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, sure. And just the, the daily monitoring, you start to find out about wellness questionnaires, about constant monitoring of athletes. And the thing is, the Rotherham Titans, it's a great rugby club. However, the coaches there, they needed interns. The, other way, the only way they could run the academy yeah. was with interns. Yeah. So you literally got X amount of players that you were looking after, and that was your job. So it was great hands-on experience. You had a lot of responsibility. You were accountable to people. Yeah, for um, sure. And you had to be professional. Yeah. One big thing I would say, guys, if you're going to s and C, if you're going to do an internship, especially at a rugby club, yeah. look like an s and C. Yeah. I don't care if that's PC or not, but... If you are going to be an s &C and you're going to be training paid athletes, the athletes will have a lot more respect for you yeah. if you turn up looking like you actually train. Yeah. So what I'd say is if you're about to start coaching Olympic lifts or agility drills or whatever to paid sportsmen on your internship, do the groundwork. Yeah. Get there two hours before, practice yeah. it. Yeah. Make sure by the time you do it, you've got a good technique. Yeah. Otherwise, to put it bluntly, you look like a Muppet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that takes me back to one of my experiences when um, I was just working with a, like a quite senior player and uh, it was pretty much like try, trying to coach some technique and he was sort of looking at me, he's like, well, what do you squat? What do you squat? And luckily I, I was training quite hard at the time and it was quite, and he looked at me, he was like, okay, fair, fair play. You, I, I, I'll listen to you now, you know, rather than just being one of these guys who, who knows all the theory, knows yeah. everything behind it, know what the perfect technical model is. But if you can't do it, rugby players especially will be like, well, why should I listen to you? Yeah. You know, you, you don't even do it. And I mean, my background, obviously, with kettlebell sport and representing the country and stuff was a great way of break, breaking the ice. And they'd say, oh, man, that's crazy. It's like, yeah. I, I compete for 10 minutes. You've got like... 20 storm men running into you like full force at like you know however many meters per second and you're thinking i'm crazy because i'm stood on a platform for 10 minutes you know and yeah. you get that mutual respect but yeah totally agree there you've got to you've got to understand what you're talking about but obviously have that relationship and that experiences with either that training method or that exercise so you can say well when i tried it i felt this happen and when I started getting over 150, 160, I could really feel this happening. Yeah. So I just scaled it back and then they go, right, okay, I'll listen to that. And the spot, make sure you know about the spot. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to be an intern at a rugby club, make sure you know about rugby. <laughs> you know, it's a simple thing. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get the respect off the, from, you know, from the athletes, then make sure you know the spot. Yeah. And I think, um, so for me, the third, the third and final piece of internships is... Don't just take what you learn from that one experience and think, right, this is how they do it in pro sport, that's gospel, you know. Take that bit, learn more about it, the understanding principles, and then don't be scared to apply some of it yourself. Learn the principle. There's a great saying by one of the great SSE coaches was, don't try and think outside the box until you understand what's inside the box, you know. And I think, learn what happens inside pro sport, 
learn about it and everything else, understand the theory, then try and think outside that box as well, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing for me. For me, be proactive, you know, be proactive. If you're not competent at some form of strength and conditioning, whether it be Olympic lifting, speed agility work, practice it, drill it. Be proactive when you're approaching gyms, approaching clubs. If you want to be an intern, do the groundwork. Yeah, Get yeah. your CV out there. Network. It's all about networking, guys. Find the right people. Make yeah. the right communications. And just be proactive. Yeah, for sure. You know. So there's our top three tips, guys. So obviously, getting the internship in the first place, you've got to work hard. Put your ego aside. Uh, when you're in there, do some of the groundwork. Look like an SNC. Get to know the players. Work on that relationship. And last but not least, like learn what happens in that environment, but don't take that as gospel. Go away, play about with it, and then learn the rules, and then learn to break the rules in the right way as well. And that's our top three tips, guys. I hope that's been helpful, and uh, we'll catch you soon.